Hey guys, when I was a young man about the same age as Tommy who's behind the camera, uh, my dad passed away suddenly from a heart attack uh, and he left me some money. And of course, instead of taking that money and doing something smart with it, like investing it or buying mutual funds, being a car guy, I went out and spent, oh, about $40,000 on a brand new dream car for me, which was at that time the Porsche 944. But the one that I really wanted was the 944 Turbo. The one that I got was a 944S. So ever since then, I've been on the lookout for a clean guards red 944 Turbo. And today I can happily say that TFL Classics is now the owner of this, a 1987 944 Turbo that I've been looking for for a long time. And we are here in Durango, Colorado. Tommy and I just picked it up in Phoenix, Arizona and drove seven hours up here, Tommy, last night. Yeah, it was a late night. In a very old car with um, a lot of provenance, uh, but not a lot of road trip experience. So it was a little bit hair raising, but let us show you what we bought because uh, this 944 is special. It's got a speedometer that goes up to 300, doesn't it, Tommy? <laughs> I suppose so, Dad. So this is, as you mentioned, a 1987 944 Turbo known as the 951. But the reason that the speedometer goes up to 300 is because this car is actually a Canadian market 944. How it ended up in Arizona is a long story, but you can see right there, Upper Canada Region 25th Anniversary. Le Sissium de Protection, so obviously you got some French script and the other aspect of it being a Canadian market car is that the speedometer is in kilometers. But apart from that, this is a super, super cool car. Now the 944 Turbo was a car that was expensive when new and then bought by young folks and then tuned to within an inch of its life. Most of them have been slammed. A lot of them have bigger turbos. A lot of them have aftermarket wheels and tires and all that, but this one is stock. Yeah, that was a trick, you know, everybody, uh, they built a lot of them, right? They built almost 200,000 of these. Uh, and so it kind of worked its way down the food chain to people like Tommy's age where they were modded. Uh, and for me, a modded vehicle is a vehicle that I certainly don't want because the problem is when you mod it, you make it your own as opposed to what I want, which is the stock original, the one that came out of Germany, the one that came out of the engineer's mind. So, uh, it, you know, it took a little bit of time to find one, especially in Guards Ride, because that was the color that I had. You know, there's this saying, uh, don't meet your idol or don't meet your dream. And you know what? This car is everything that I thought it would be. Uh, it's actually a hoot to drive. It's quick uh, in, by modern standards. Uh, and um, the thing that really strikes me is either I've gotten really big or the car has somehow shrunk. Wouldn't you agree, Tommy? <laughs> It is a very, very small car. Yeah, it's hard to kind of see the proportions on camera, but compared to most modern cars, it is very, very small. So I think my dad is going to pop the hood and we'll talk about what makes the 944 Turbo so special. So in the lineup, there were three models. There was a standard 944, the 944S, and then the Turbo, and then later on they had like the Turbo S and they got quicker, and then they had the S2 cars. But this one being in 1987 means that it's a 2.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, eight valves. Now this is a slant four cylinder. You can kind of see it laid on its side. The 944 was an evolution of the 924, but what they did is they took a 928 V8, kind of cut it in half, and then changed everything and made this engine. So you can see it is bone stock, which is very, very cool. It even has the stock turbo air box. It just had a uh, timing belt done on it pretty recently. So it is quite a nice vehicle underneath here. There's no weird strut bars. Granted, it is looking a little dirty and a little tired, but overall it runs very, very nicely. Well, you know, I looked for that. I wanted a car that, you know, had the road grime on it because it shows you that it's original. Obviously, uh, once a car has been modified or crashed, it loses some of its value. Uh, and if you're looking for something that is hopefully a car that you'll hold on to and is an investment also, then you want something as original as possible. Now, the other thing, Tommy, that made this car unique is also, well, behind the rear wheels there, right? It doesn't have a drive shaft. Well, yeah, so these had uh, a front engine layout and then they had a torque tube to a rear transaxle. So the transmission is actually in the back of the vehicle. Now, one thing that's interesting is when is the last time you saw a turbo 944 with its original exhaust poking out there? Very, very cool stuff. Now to tell the turbo from a standard 944, you had this really cool kind of rear diffuser. You had a different front bumper as well with these kind of slits 
In the lower front end, this one has the phone dial wheels, the 944 turbos, had bigger brakes than the standard 944s. They had improved suspension. Uh, but the interior in this car is really, really nice. It's held up very well, apart from one terrible aftermarket modification. Do you want to show them what that is, Dad? Oh, God. Uh, every car we end up looking at always has an aftermarket radio. Uh, so, uh, you know, while this was great like 20 years ago, uh, not so great. We also found out that somebody glued this in place because it kept falling out. So we don't have a center <laughs> console. Uh, we also have another terrible aftermarket uh, modification, and that is a Viper alarm system. Uh, and whoever put these things in um, didn't do a great job because they just become a tangle of spaghetti wires that can immobilize the car when you least wanted to. So we've tried to pull it out of our 911. Uh, the mechanic was terrified of it. We've got the same issue here. But sometimes, you know, you, you have to play the card, uh, cards you dealt. So why don't you show them the interior? Yeah, so this one does have the black leather seating surface, which looks quite nice. Very, very shiny black. And then, I think my dad wants to show you that it is a four-seater, so underneath here, you do have little teeny-weeny seats that pop up. Check that out, that's kind of cool. Um, it does have the original Porsche. And, and seat belts. Oh yeah, retractable lap belts, look at that. That seemed to be stuck. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think anyone's been back there in a hot sec. It does have the original Porsche steering wheel. I do apologize about the sun here, but you can see 166,000 kilometers and the speedometer does in fact go up to 300 kilometers an hour. But apart from that, the dash is in really nice shape. Um, there's that horrible aftermarket radio. It does have air conditioning, which doesn't work, and it is in Celsius, uh, but it does, like, for example, it's never been smoked in, which is good. It really has held up nicely. Uh, it does have the sunroof, so you push a button, and then it kind of rises up in the back, or you can remove the whole thing by pulling a couple of latches on the, uh, the panel there. And then, let's show them the trunk, because the trunk is enormous, actually, for the size of the car. I handed it to you. Oh, I do have the key. Never mind. I do have the key. Uh, so. There it goes. Look how, look how big this is. A, a true hatchback. Now, uh, one thing when you're looking for 944s that you can look for is back here. You can pull this off. You can pull. You can unsnap this. Uh, and then you can look in here. There are these little cubbies. Why don't you show them? You see it? And if there's any rust in there, that's a great place for rust to form. Uh, and so that's a good place to look for, you know, how original. Look at this, Tommy. Completely original. That yeah. just came unglued. I don't think this is, I don't think anybody's been in here since we looked at it uh, yesterday. Uh, well, I hope not. It's been <laughs> in the parking lot all night. Yeah. Yeah. If there's somebody has been, it'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? But you, yeah, you can kind of tell if there's any rust. Uh, you know, one of the things we're always looking for are rust-free cars. Uh, you can unsnap these. This is kind of cool. And then you can lift this up, and there's your spare tire, which I wouldn't want to put on the car. Uh, and get this, Tommy. We still have the original jack. Look at this. Ah, toolkit. The original toolkit. Very cool. I think this has been the first time somebody's opened up in a long time, huh? Yeah, very cool. I like that. Yeah, and not rusty. Uh, and why don't you show them what's in the glove box, because we got, else, we got something else that's pretty cool. What is that? Well, look in the glove box. Owner's manual, dude. Oh, the owner's manual. You know, I'm not going to show you that because we have all of our registration stuff in there. But uh, let's talk about the performance on this car. So 0 to 60 was supposed to be right around 6 seconds at a 217 horsepower of turbocharged Fury. Uh, funny enough, the 1987 911 Carrera, as far as I can tell, also made exactly 217 horsepower. So the 44 and the 911 were right on top of each other in terms of power numbers, which is uh, pretty cool. But, um, of course, this being front-engined and water-cooled, it didn't quite have the same, I don't know, exotic nature of the 911. Oh, there you go. You found it. That's the one I had. That was a mid-grade model, and, of course, there's the uh, turbo. So, anytime you can get the uh, owner's manual, it's pretty darn cool. Oh, it's falling apart. Yeah, you know. Got to be a little careful with it. It's a 30-year-old car, right? <laughs> this is what happens. Look at that. Germans were serious about their <laughs> acceleration curves and torque curves. <laughs> 944 Turbo, yeah. 944 S. Very cool. Look at that. There's your 0 to 60 time right there. 0 to 60, yeah, in second gear, top of second. Yeah, that's the 944 S. Where's the 0 to 60 on the turbo? Right, you just had it. On the turbo? Yeah, these are the turbos. So 0 to 60 or 100 kilometers was what? Top of second. Yeah, 60 was. Oh, very cool. Uh, is this seconds? Yeah. So yeah. So just over five seconds. Yeah. Is what they were saying. Yeah. 
Hmm? Yeah. Uh, and you know what? Uh, the thing about like old cars that we've learned, having had a lot of them, and let's face it, Tommy, over the last 10 years, we've had a lot of Porsches. We've had the original Boxster, the second generation Boxster, a 996, 911 Carrera 2, uh, and now, of course, we have a 911 87. Um, and the thing you learn about cars is that when you get like 30 years or longer, uh, it's hard to, to like keep up with traffic because even back then, while they were quick, they felt today like they're just out of place, right? They're small, they're kind of dangerous because there's no airbags, there's no safety equipment, uh, and they feel like, uh, you know, something you want to take out on a weekend, but certainly wouldn't want a daily drive. Yet this car, this car feels, you know, not completely modern, but very modern. You know, it's quiet, uh, everything works, uh, and you don't feel like, you know, you're going to get uh, beaten off the stoplight by uh, a soul with a very aggressive driver. I think you're exactly right, Dad. It's a surprisingly quick vehicle, even by today's standards. Now it's not perfect. Uh, it does desperately need tires. We have yet to own a Porsche that doesn't shake like a scared poodle above 65 miles an hour. And this one is no exception, but- But there are some good things about it. This is the first car we've bought where we haven't had to change the wipers. They're actually, look at that. Somebody actually changed them out, maybe because it was in Arizona. Uh, so, uh, we haven't had to do that. We also uh, haven't had many calamities with it. The lights unfortunately stopped uh, popping up and down uh, and we went on a very rough road and I think it shook the connections loose so now we manually have to kind of shake them to, to get them to pop up and down. But that's the fun of owning a classic car, right? It's no fun when you don't get to put a little bit of like sweat equity into it and make it your own by bringing it back to where it should be. There's a lot of things that are great about original cars but 30 year old plastics, 30 year old connections, 30 year old wires, they get, you know, pretty uh, pretty sketchy and ratty at times. Yeah, so we'll get a new motor on the lights to fix the connections, but it is a very nice example of a 944 turbo. And now I think we need to tell them. Oh, yeah, what did you That's find? Not good. Oh, yeah, some cracking there. There's some cracking. Uh, the seal is bad, of course. Sure. Uh, you think that's Bond or you think that's just, you think that's just where the paint? Hard to say. Uh, how about values, Tommy? What are the values of these things? Well, you can get a really bad one, a 944, just a standard one, uh, in rough shape for about five or six K. And then Concourse turbos are gonna be probably over 30 grand. And this one was kind of right in the middle. Yeah, we just had Moto Man, if you guys have been watching our channel over uh, at the offices, and uh, you know, I told him about getting, potentially getting this, and he thinks that these things aren't gonna come up. I disagree. I think the 944, even though they built a lot of them, uh, is just on the cusp of starting to become very, very popular. And hopefully we'll help popularize it with uh, this video but uh, you know it's just a pleasure uh, and being able to finally buy my dream car 30 years later and to do it with my son uh, is uh, well it's something that is worth more than the $18,000 which we paid for it and by the way I want to give out a huge thank you uh, to Manny uh, the guy we bought it from in uh, Arizona he was really great uh, you know great store to this car kept it in great shape one of those owners who's meticulous. Uh, and whenever I meet an owner like that, if the owner's good, I know uh, the car is gonna be good. Tommy, there's that saying, like, buy the best car you can afford. Why don't you talk about uh, what the difference is between this one and the 911? Because, you know, that's been a whole different ball of wax. Well, the difference is that 911 nows are like 50 or 60 grand for a good one. And these are still 15 to 20 for a good one. Oh, our 911, well, we bought one for 36, which was exactly twice the price of this one. And we thought we got a heck of a deal. And it turned out to be kind of a debacle in terms of uh, the top not working, in terms of um, getting the audio system fixed and the electrical systems fixed. Now we're in it closer to like 50 grand. And it still isn't as nice as this car. So if you want value and fun to drive, the 944 Turbo is a good potential investment because I do think you're right that they are going to go up. Yeah, I'm sure the comments are going to be like, you spent how much for a 944 Turbo 18K? I have one around the neighborhood that I could buy that's brand new with 2,000 miles for 2,000. We get those comments. But the fact is, you know, buy the nicest one you can. Uh, and then when inevitably you do have to fix it, like already we have to fix these headlights, uh, then you feel good about it because you're putting money into something that is valuable versus something that you're gonna get upside down. And, and it is easy to get upside down in a classic Porsche because even the cheap ones, 
the mechanic still is going to be if you have to go to a mechanic Porsche prices well guys we are going to do a full video on this coming up very shortly just wanted to give you a heads up that we're in Durango um, so find us stuck on the side of the road but as always this has been Tommy and my dad <laughs> saying thanks for watching uh, and uh, yeah we're gonna have a lot more fun with this classic Porsche as we well bring uh, the lights back to working order right Tommy that's next that's next we'll see you next time